Thank you. I want to thank my delegation colleague, Congressman Mass, for drafting this important bill, the South Florida Clean Coastal Waters Act of 2019, to address the HABs problem, the harmful algae blooms, and improve water quality in Florida. I also want to thank Senator Rubio for introducing the Senate Companion and give credit to my predecessor in, in, in Congress, now Governor DeSantis, for prioritizing clean water at the state level. Red tides and green algae have plagued Florida in recent years, as we've discussed here today. It impacts Lake Okeechobee, the Everglades, Indian River Lagoon, uh, in my district, and both of Florida's coasts. Last Congress, the Interagency Task Force on HABs was reauthorized, which was a very important step. This bill ensures that the task force will produce an integrated assessment uh, on the causes, the consequences, approaches to reduce HABs, identify the current gaps in research, and very importantly, to produce an action plan to deal with it. The focus of the task force is the Everglades, the health of the Everglades impacts water quality across the state. The scope of the introduced version for HR 335 attempted to take this into account by including, quote, contiguous coastal nearshore water, unquote, in the definition of eligible waterways. However, Contiguous could be interpreted by the task force, and this was, this was my concern, in any number of ways, potentially excluding the northern reaches of the Indian River Lagoon. The entire Indian River Lagoon is part of the National Estuary Program, and the southern section is an Army Corps of Engineers authorized reservoir included in the comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan. According to the Army Corps, Indian River Lagoon is, quote, home to more than 3,000 species of plants and animals and considered the most biologically diverse estuarine system in the continental United States, unquote. Uh, this dynamic uh, ecosystem is sensitive. It's important to the environment for those reasons, but critically, it's, it's also important to our economy. And a 2016 economic valuation study found that the output of the lagoon is about $7.6 billion annually. So for these reasons, it's the right thing to do to ensure the HABS task force includes the entire lagoon. In coordination with Con Congressman Mast, I offered a management uh, amendment in committee in the, in the Science, Space, and Technology Committee markup uh, that lists the entire river lagoon and the definition of waterways to in be included in this bill. Uh, we are not just seeing uh, HABs in southern Florida. It is now spreading to other parts of my district in all parts of Florida. We have already seen blue-green algae in the St. Johns River uh, and even spreading into our springs, protecting the springs in central Florida is an ongoing effort. Uh, it's for this reason why the task force integrated assessment is so important. Uh, it will improve the water quality management, harmful algae grooms across the entire lagoon. Moving forward, uh, the Congress should examine the Clean Water State Revolving Fund allotment the formula, time is which has not been updated. The minute. The which gentleman. has not been updated since 1987. Uh, thank, and thank you to my colleague for yielding. Uh, importantly, in 2018, Florida received the third lowest allotment per capita, according to the EPA, yet it has the third most significant infrastructure needs in the country. This is unacceptable, particularly for a program so important in a state where water is so critical to our way of life. I want to thank Congressman Lucas. I want to again thank Congressman Mast uh, for his work on HABs uh, in this important legislation before us today, and I yield my time.